Welcome to the Mastering Cassandra video course. In the last section, we looked at some major spring components that we'll be using to program the application. In section five, we'll dive deep into the Cassandra module of Spring Data Framework. We're going to understand its functionalities and relationship with Spring Data. Then we'll learn about the various data access methods offered by Spring Data Cassandra through coding a number of example programs. The methods include JDBC style, Query Builder style, and POJO style, respectively. We'll then leverage on dependency injection to configure the program to connect to a Cassandra database. Lastly, we'll demonstrate how to use the administration template, which is seldom mentioned elsewhere. First, let's have a peek at the core concepts. In this video, we're going to introduce the basic knowledge of Spring Data Cassandra module. We'll then learn to properly set up a Maven project to enable it. Also, we need to be aware of the best practices recommended by the Spring Data Cassandra project team. Spring Data Cassandra follows the overall objective of Spring Data. Its goal is to make the implementation of a data access layer simpler and easier by significantly reducing the effort spent on too much boilerplate code. It primarily provides a number of templates, builders, and repositories to achieve its goal. The repositories are the most powerful feature provided. It's an abstraction capable of working with the domain class to manage data access. The core interface is the CRUD depository. It provides sophisticated create, read, update, and delete functionality for the domain class being managed. The CRUD repository interface provides trivial operations such as save, find one, find all, count, delete, exists, so on and so forth. In addition to this, it provides support for pagination access. We can use STS to write a Spring Data enabled application quickly. Switch back to STS. Create a new Spring Starter project called Chapter 51. We don't need to add any dependencies here, and so simply click on Finish. We add the Maven dependencies manually. Open pom.xml. Add the Spring Data Cassandra dependency. As Spring Data Cassandra requires Datastax's Java driver and mapping, we add them accordingly. Open Chapter 51 application class. Add two private static variables to represent the cluster and session to be connected. First, we modify the Spring application to return a configurable application context to the CTX variable. Then use cluster.builder to add the IP address of the cluster. In our example, it's the local cluster. Then we can assign the session connected to the CWT keyspace as shown. It's also a good practice to close the application context when finishing the program. Run the project as a Spring Boot application. In the console, we see that the program successfully connected to the local Cassandra cluster. Thus, we can access the Cassandra cluster in a Java program. We'll explore the functionality provided by Spring Data Cassandra in the videos that follow. Spring Data Cassandra is an open source project, and its source code repository is hosted in GitHub. We can always find the latest project status and information in here. It's also worthwhile digging into the source code to better understand the inner workings of it. Scrolling down a bit, we see the best practices section. We should visit here from time to time to get the latest update. Particularly, the considerations shown here deserve our attention. First, when creating a template, we should wire in a single session per keyspace because a session is thread safe. Therefore, only one session per keyspace per application context is allowed. Even though we can submit native CQL commands and statements in Spring Data Cassandra, it can't be stressed enough that we must not issue the use keyspace command explicitly. Also, Spring Data Cassandra works closely with Datastax's Java driver, which specifically handles all failover and retry logic behind the scenes. We don't need to take care of them in our applications. Finally, be sure to include all hosts spanning across all data centers when getting the cluster connection. Next, we'll look at how to use JDBC style to access a Cassandra database.